piece of paper, a couple of pens. Copy paper. Piece of paper for the right. Yeah. So I get those magazines. Jordan's mom. Who the hell is Jordan? I'm gonna do it. I know that name, Jordan. Hello. Yes, good morning, Miss Carmen. This is Sir Block New Speaker. I'm doing fantastic. Did I supposed to meet with you? Right, right, exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. keep talking. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Um, did you, how's your transportation? Okay. Because if, what, if I can get you to my warehouse, to my conference room, so you can sit down with me and see what's going on, how things really, really work in the business world. Because the money that you gather up is peanuts. They're not giving you enough. It's taking too long. You know? So I'm going to show you a, a product line that is going to follow you wherever you go. You see? So, so you'll be eating off this money for a long, long time. my number, you just call me and I'm going to invite you to the warehouse and we'll pick a time and all that. I'll be waiting on you because it's easier to take our time and get it right than speed it up and get it wrong, you know? There you go. See now, if you make me, put me on your team, on your fundraising team, see those kind of ideas come with nothing to me. A, a penny, a penny a dozen. You know, I come fast. You know, all we gotta do is take our time, and believe me, the community will be all they'll be supporting you more than you can ever believe. But we gotta do it right. We gotta do it right. And once we do that, we're done. You hear me? We're all gonna make some money. man.
but you're gonna love me, that's for sure. Because you're gonna be making money in both states. You'll see. Yes. There you go. I'm gonna text you my wife's number two, just in case, because sometimes my, my phone be off and hers stay on more than mine. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is uh, Carmen, uh, Jordan's mom, the one the baby, the delay. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, we're going to make a lot of money, Miss Carmen. Don't worry about nothing no more. God sent you, definitely sent you an angel. Well, uh, it's Studio Stephanie. And it's 678-330-8139. And you put her in your phone as well. I'm going to lock you in right now. What's your last name? Say what? O-A-K-E-S. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got this big right here. Say, uh, say one more thing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, yeah, there we go. Gotcha. I'm putting you in the system, okay? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. yeah, we're going to make a lot of money together. It's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's all right to do it. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with getting rich? While, while the, it ain't our fault that we got rich and that God put Jordan in that position. You know what I'm saying? And we and we looked up, we can help all kinds of other kids, you know, through the Jordan Foundation, you know? You'll see. Yes, ma'am. Short in line. Trust me, that's my job. That's what God's paying me to do. You know, to make sure you tight. You know what I'm saying? Why would he bring us both in each other's path like that? With so much energy. You see what I'm saying? That's crazy. You gotta use God's uh, energy. Or you're losing. Use it or lose it. You know? So, this is our chance. I mean, because there ain't many people. Well, there ain't a lot of people gonna be able to do something on a great grand scale. It just never, it does, it's rare that it even happens. You know what I'm saying? So when it does happen, don't be shocked. You see what I'm saying? Be say, hey, I've been waiting for this. You know? Text it to me. Just text it to me. And text me the hours. But just do that because I'm getting ready to do a Okay, what time is this? What, what time is it gonna be? Okay. Send me a picture of Jordan. Can you send me a nice picture of her? Send that to me. All right. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm looking forward to it. God bless you. Right, thanks, peace. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. What's going on, old man? Time for a refill. Yes, sir. <laughs> on the neck up. <laughs> I mean, refill, feel. There she is. Well, I gotta get yeah, what you mean? We all right? I know. Oh, cool, man. Was you, you wasn't yeah. sick one of those days, was you? Oh, okay. I agree. Keep quiet. All right. No, I had to have We'll be calling Big Money soon. Big Money Destiny. That's it. You want, it's okay to do that, right? That's yep. right. Get paid. Get rich, girl. Get rich while you're young. You have more fun when you're young. Believe me. You got to plenty of money. Do what you want to do. You know? Do what you got to do. You say, hey, I need that. Yeah, you got it. 
contact. Yes, you got it. You got it. Uh. Yeah, you got it. Let him do the running thing. You relax. Uh -huh. You're a guest in my house. Uh -huh. you relax. We'll do all the work. I have yeah. a young lady. She's supposed to be here, too. Good. Praise God. It's just a matter of time. Right? Oh, it's all about time. People put too much energy on other stuff. I know. When it's time, God gave it the time to get it done. And now, he's doing it while they're young. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, she ain't getting overly blessed. <laughs> it ain't no mess. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. So a mess. Destiny, do me a favor, Sphere. Can you push to the right a little bit? Right. Just a couple inches. There we go. Right there. Good. All right. Start her oh, it's gonna happen. And you guys, you know what? This is a deal. Do you knowing that you're gonna be the? Do me a favor, Rob. Sit in that chair. Let me see what kind of shot I have. Right there. Hey, oh yeah. You drinking on the job again, right? Eh? Yep. There she go. <laughs> Chai tea. What kind of tea? Chai. Chai. Shave, man. Stop playing. <laughs> Good mind this morning. I couldn't come over here, my face looking like that. Looking rough.
Jack. Just my dream, my dream is coming together. Because they're already teaching the, the kids the, the curriculum I'm teaching them. <laughs> Trained assassins. You ain't kidding. Trained assassins. So I get over here. Come on. Every day. Come on, we need to get ready class. Monday through Friday. Life class with Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Two At least two. What time That's the big year nine. And I get it on. I, and I get them to talk. Talk, whatever y'all. Is that part of the uh, part of their curriculum now? From the school? The school said we want you to. The, the, the school? What school you get? It's a Christian Academy school. It's a private school. Yeah, I'm going to, we're going to show y'all how to go after the Christian Academy schools. They're, going to, they're down. They're all in. Uh -huh. What? Man, you what kidding me? The, Imagine me teaching the curriculum to all the, the Christian Academy schools all around. Them. That's gonna tie in with your coupons. That's, they got quite a few Christian schools in. in, in, in well, they're all over the place. There's private schools. There's one around the corner. Private school right around the corner. All the little kids over there, four, fourth grade, fifth grade, and all I'm gonna do is go there and talk to them. They say, will you teach it? You can ah. teach? I say, yes, sir. So can. <laughs> What's their ages that do that coming here? They are 16, 17. And that's the real group that I really, really want is the, like the 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, all the way up to 25. The other the groups right there. So they 15, really, they 10, to 20, 10 to 25. It's really the age, but 15. Right yeah, there, the 25 and 10 years span. That's ninth grade, eight, eight, ninth grade, 10th grade. When they grade. get right in the ninth grade, oh, they just, they, they, they can't, they're ready to learn. They're ready to earn is what they're ready yeah. to do. They're already learning. They want to do some earning. <laughs> Y'all ready to learn? You ready? Come on, Leslie. Let's write some numbers. Okay? And they can you write on that table huh? talk or do you need a uh, Yeah, go Yeah, baby. Give me about four of them. Yeah, put the yeah, put the date, put your name on the top. Just like school. I'm not right? Put the date and all that. Your and I'm gonna give you a here we go. Check the notes, make sure you're not drawing trees and uh, <laughs> uh, Now the name of this is called Grassroot Economics. That's the heading. Okay, that's what it is. Everything that we touch is going to be grassroots economics because that's what you're going to be doing. It's going to be very simple. It's very simple. Let's do it. She finally got one out, huh? Ah, she is a human being. <laughs> Don't you sit back and then smooth. She's like, wait, 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 I get to know you a little bit. I was not laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you got me with no danger. I, I, you, you got like another father right here to protect you. You hear me? Ain't like nothing happen to you. Believe that. You ready? Oh, yeah. Grassroots economics. <laughs> okay, the first question I want to ask you. When it comes to grassroots, when it comes to grassroots, what do you think about? No, ain't it grassroots? This is grassroots movement, grassroots. Getting it from the bottom, from the from the root. 
the from the root to the fruit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. A grass means a seed that's underground. Okay. That's the grass. I said, where's the grass root? Grass root is underground. Right. It can't grow if it's on top of the ground. It's got to get down under the ground. Once it gets under the ground, it starts to grow down. Right. Right? So a lot of people think about, when you think about growth, a lot of people think they always want to do what? They just want to grow up. But that's not even realistic. I mean, you, you have to get grounded and rooted. Right? You have to make sure your roots and your foundation is solid. Yeah? I mean, if you're going to go into something. Okay, good. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. I know. Good go over there, bro. Okay. Wait a minute. No, let him go. Let him go over the door. No, you wait. sit up. Come on. She, she's come on. out there. She, wait, wait, wait. Okay, come. I'm coming outside. That's important. Go. But that very smart here. You, 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 you said, interrupted. And we're getting ready to do this. We're going to do it. The thing is, is that how do we uh, handle this? As a manager, as somebody that's thinking, if you're late, what does it, should we just keep? What if they keep coming in at nine thirty, nine forty? Do we let them keep coming in? No, you gotta say, hey, see you next time. But they try to get in, and people boom, 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 we in here, we in here having business, right? If you was in a closed environment where you had your staff, and you're gonna be interrupted every time you have a staff meeting. And, you know, y'all are really trying to get this product into the market. No, nah, y'all keep getting interrupted. But this is a, a, you know, every case is different. We want to make sure this lady gets some information as well. So she can help her people. You're going to have a lot of people, Destiny. I hope you, I really hope you're ready for this. I hope you're ready for, the, 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 you know, to be in charge of your life. You know, There's nothing wrong with being young and in charge. Nothing. There's plenty, there's not a lot of them, but there are children out there that live, you know, they're making plenty of money. You know, Justin B, Justin, what's his name? Justin B? How old was he when he came on the scene? How old was, was Michael Jackson when they came on the scene? But they had plenty of money. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Your name is? I'm Mia. My name is Sir. So I'm about to do this. Uh, Jay? You know Destiny? Yes, we have a good one. All right. You know some studio Stephanie? You know her too? Uh, hey, how you uh, doing? So, uh, baby, can you turn that light off in the hallway? We don't need that. Thank you. Let me receive a dollar. Okay. Come on, man. What's your name, the date, and, uh, and the name of this uh, project? Okay. Grassroot Economics. And the question was raised, what is grassroot? So the, the, the answer is, for this situation, it means grass, a seed that's under the ground, right? As a, a root of a grass, grass root is the root of the ground, right? Where do you find a root of the grass? On the ground. And a lot of people want to start off at a millionaire status. They don't want to start with the seed. And you have to start with the seed. There's words in the a business community called, uh, even not only in the business, but in the world called grassroots, grassroots movement, grassroots. And if they, a lot of times things fail because it hasn't taken root. It hasn't taken root. It has to be simple enough so that it can be spread through the community, so they can have good grass, right? Good children, good smart families, right? So that's the fruit of, that. so from the root to the fruit, right? That's, that's what we gotta start dealing with. And these are the roots. So they're gonna bear fruit, the roots, right? But it's easy to teach these guys. Why? Because they're children. And children, they have the capacity to learn. And if you give them information that's 
really exciting, then you have success. They're not, they're not gonna run away from it. They don't run towards their success. Like that's it. That's the already makes money. So it is in her best interest to get as much information as she can to make her a millionaire before she's 18, you know? And she know how to run her life, right? And that's smart, I mean, because these children grow up to teach other children. That's all I care about, okay? So we're here. Grassroots economics, starting underground and growing root. Now, the first thing I want to uh, tell you about grassroots economics, really tell you about grassroots economics is that it is to, to stop selling to customers. Stop selling to your customers. What you want to do is you want to distribute to your customers. Right? You want to recruit them. Stop selling your customers. See that what I'm saying? We get there, but you, it's not it's not just a listening thing. You really got to hold in, take some good notes, because some great things will happen from these notes. Trust me, I've been doing this a long time. So stop selling your customers. Recruit them. I'm going to explain that to you in a second. Okay, if I had a, I have a product, right? Now, I can, let's say this costs a dollar. Some people don't mind spending a dollar for a good pair. I'll give you a dollar for it, right? So, I'm gonna sell, I can either sell you this pair for a dollar, or I can sell you a hundred of them for 75 cents. So you can sell, at least make a quarter, if you sell a million of them, you made a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Especially if everybody really wants that product, right? Everywhere you go, like toilet paper. How many people know, know use toilet paper? That's why we use toilet paper for fundraisers. Because it's a no-brainer. I mean, who, you know, you're not gonna buy a case of toilet paper from this child here, and you use it every day? All right? Now, which one's better? To sell one pen to this person for a dollar or sell that person a million pens over a lifetime for 75 cents? <laughs> See the difference? So that means if you develop help, the help, right? The help people, you get people to help you move the product. So write this down. It's better to use 1%. Oh, it's better to be. It's like, you know all this? You know all this? What are you doing? Are you typing it in? You're going to take some notes. You're not going to sit here. I'll, I'll wait for you. No. Let me see. Let me see what you do. You're typing in it? Okay. No, you're going to do what these folks are doing. What? Write it. Let's go. It's better to use 1%. Yep. It's better to use 1%. Sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. You're going to come up to the table. You're going to get rid of this until you can write a little bit better, okay? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I got you. Okay. Right. Come on now. That's not good. That's not good business. Sit here with the little people do not learn. You gotta do it my way. When you write your classes, you can do it the way you want. You can say, hey, you can lean back, uh, have coffee, cream, cookies, and, and, and you have potty, you can do your classes any way you want. Let the kids run amok, right? Everybody has no choice how they want to run their life. And I, if you're gonna be a teacher or a preacher, you're gonna do it your way. You're not going to let somebody control your class with them. Don't ever let that happen. Never. Okay. So it's better to use 1% of 100 people's efforts. 
it's better to use one percent of a hundred people's efforts. One percent you, one percent from you, one percent from you, one percent, right? Than to use one hundred percent of my own efforts. <laughs> you get more things done if you allow people to come in, share the experience. They're happy. They want to go out, tell people, and do things, right? So, but you make them involved, then they'll be they'll be glad to give you a hundred percent of their efforts if they're happy, right? Can you imagine having a hundred people and you get a hundred percent of their efforts? Oh my God, <laughs> we go big. So that's what I'm working on. I'm not working on the one percent. If I'll start with the one, and I'll work up to the two, the three, you gotta be patient. That's the root, that's the root process. You gotta water the thing a little bit. I mean, come on. You're not gonna nurture it. You're not gonna nurture your children. You're not gonna nurture nobody. You're not gonna do it. Right? Of course you're gonna do it. But if you do it in a way where they can grow from it, and they could, they're like fertilizer now. They're gonna around some better fertilizer, right? Okay. So we got that. Stop selling your customers. Recruit them. Number two. I just want to make sure y'all. Okay. Selling versus distribution. Versus VS versus distribution. Now you see where we're going? If you, if we teach distribution to our children, what our return of the comeback is gonna be incredible, right? So, I was just talking about that. You wanna sell? You can be the greatest salesman. Ain't nothing wrong with being a great salesperson. Nothing. Because I'm great at it. Right? But I'm better at distribution. <laughs> That's what I want to teach people and teach, especially the children, because we'll start to take over our communities again. Because we got a bunch of people understand distribution. We can't just be uh, 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 retail, retail people, you know? Consumers. But, but who's teaching the opposite of being consumerism? Who's teaching that? I mean, I'm talking about the public people. So now, we're going to teach our, our people to do it publicly now. I, I, I can't be the only one. After I teach the, these lessons, there's no way that y'all going to sit on this. Because <laughs> I give you a beautiful example. You have a, what do you do for a living? Okay. Uh, so why you, you, what do you do on the side? Why you, you work with the, Concerned about fundraising? You want to raise funds? No. You want to make money? I want, I want to be able to walk away from my job. I want to control my time. Yeah, so you want to get into fundraising. This is fundraising. You're working, you got a regular job, right? Yeah. That's fundraising. You're still raising funds? It's just which way do you want to do it? Do you want to do it at $20 an hour? Or do you want to do it at $100 an hour? That's the only difference. You know, what are you willing to sell it for? That's all. So why want the hundred dollars an hour? Okay, now what do I have to do to get it? You know? To get off my job. Because to get being off my job is is a nice idea, right? But then you have to have a money making strategies, right? To make sure that you go not only leave your job, but live a life of luxury. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with that, is it? It doesn't matter if you're 40 or 14. It really doesn't matter. How you want to live your life really is really up to you. See, I've been like that since I was 10, 11 years old. I was like, uh -uh, I ain't going to live my life like that. I said, that person right there, how they live their life, I will be like that. Because I see the hammer money, is, but I'm like, man. I want to handle money too, you know, because I said, I figured it out that that's what everybody was striving for, to pay bills, and I said, 
you know, because you're sitting there, you know, as a kid, you listen, how oh, we got to pay these bills? Okay, now you're listening to this stuff, and you see how money they, that your parents are giving up this money. They said, man, where are they getting this money from? Where they, and come to find out, they ain't even making that much money. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I was a teenager, I was making more money than my, my mother. She ain't know it though. And, uh, she didn't know because she didn't care about that kind of stuff. She didn't care about how I was doing whatever I was doing. I see the way I was being treated. I, was, I mean, I couldn't even get a quarter. You know, and I, you know, and all the things I did, you know, I said, and you say, no. See, so you got to, I had to avoid that, that, that. I said, that would never happen to me again. As long as I live. I ask somebody for a quarter or a dollar and they ain't going to give it. And I, and, I, and I know I deserve it, I said, I got you. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was it. That was the history lesson right now. Wait. One quarter changed my life forever. Wait. One no. <laughs> it did it for me. <laughs> okay? All right. Now, selling versus distribution. You got to understand that when you touch that system of distribution, you, you're just like all, you're just like any of these companies that sell Walmart, Kmart, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you're distributing now. It's a difference. That people rely on you for their products now. You, you, you created a, a want, a need, and a desire. And see, once you created that need, want, and desire, they'll never stop doing business with you. Plus, they'll send people to you. People will send people, especially if you inquire that they do. They say, if you have any friends and family that would love the, the thing, just send them to me. Okay, oh, you do that too? Yeah, I'm a wholesale distributor. And that's why I do. I put people in business every day. You keep talking that language. Keep talking. They're like you, 14, right? 13, 14. Keep talking our language. Say, I say, what you do? Say, I'm a distributor. Just keep saying it. I'm a master distributor. They say, well, master distributor. What does a master distributor do? Well, I put other people in business. And I distribute in, in the wholesale. They said, well, do you retail? I said, nah, not really. I don't get really into that. I deal with uh, uh, fundraisers for churches, schools. You know, people, entity that want to make money. And I teach it. I teach you how to, to to buy and sell my products. Really? Why are you doing? Well, it's going to help my college. I'm going to college, and I'm going to learn more about business and, and teaching. And, and people are excited about that kind of talk, aren't they? Wouldn't you bring, that's all positive information, right? Can you imagine that? I was pitching a boy when I was a young kid. I used to tear him up. I used to talk just like that. I was, I was smart. I was just like, a, you know what I figured out? I figured out that I was a, a human being just like you and I had gifts that you just didn't have. And I was willing to use mine. That's all I get. That's the only difference. I knew the more I told people was in college, I tell them I'm, I'm doing this to go to college and for my college education. Yeah, yeah. Man, they were reaching. Yeah. They were reaching. But, but was that pitch right on the first time? No. The first pitch provided was, would you buy something for me? And, you know, I'm just I'm just selling, trying to stay out of trouble. And then, nah, now nah, you're saying, right here. okay. Why would somebody deny me on that? I said, let me try something now. Well, I'm going to college, and I, when I seen them fat first, look, their eyes bling open. They said, you going to college? Are you trying to sell me something? You got something I really want? Cause you sell garbage bags, candy, uh, all kinds of stuff, things that people wanted. Yeah. So it didn't really, you know, <laughs> I wasn't, I, I knew it was foreign to them. I figured it out early, young, that if I had something that people really want, will you sell, Destiny? Candy. Do you have a lot of opposition when, when it comes to the candy? So opposition, let me make sure you understand that. If if you were selling candy, you walk up a bit, do a lot of people tell you no when you sell a candy? See opposition when somebody says no, I don't want it. Do you get a lot of that? 
Not with candy because they're not right. everybody. Listen, I don't even eat peanut brittle. And sometimes I buy it. Depends on what mode I'm in. Yeah. I'll just buy it. No, well, I don't eat it. But I know people that do. I bring it in. You like peanut brittle? Oh, yeah, yeah, I love peanut brittle. So it's not that it's the peanut brittle. It's the, the approach that the child took with me. If you aggressively came to me and said, will you buy my peanut brittle? Most likely I wouldn't do it. Because whoever's teaching you, they teach you that. Because uh, I would teach my student to put your hand on high. My name is Destiny. And I have a product that I distribute. Now you're, now you're talking. Yeah, and I'm a distributor for this product. And I would like to know, would you support me? Because I'm putting myself to college. And I'm saving up for my college. And I, right. Right. You, you want that? You said before you college. Right. Give me three and all. That's all I got. I, I don't buy from every child. They, they got to come with they got to come with a pitch. My wife will tell you, baby, I mean children that walk up on her and I it depends on how they approach. Right? Okay? So we got that. So you, you that 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 thing about selling something. Watch now with the bunch of, now here come the distribution. So they're excited about they bought the candy from you, right? Said I also am a distributor, so I'm looking for distributors. So if you know anybody needs to, some extra cash, especially if they have a youth, I teach youth how to make extra money. This they ready to give you up the number. Hey, I got 15 year old that need to be working with you. You're smart. I like you. You teach it to them. I teach uh, economics, rational economics, to children, the ones that want to learn. And I go into, I teach people to go into the churches and the schools and how to sell. I teach other children how to do that. What? You teach them to be just like you? Yes. Who doesn't want to be like a child of uh, 10, 13, 14 years old and pitching it? Everything. The pitch is coming. The conversation is sharp, sharp. I was shocked. I used to love when people say, you are so smart. I said, thank you. <laughs> and I was clean too now. So the shop was just, wasn't just with the words. I always make sure I was clean too. <laughs> so I teach y'all, we didn't even get to the etiquette stuff here. We try to get to the etiquette, how, do you, how you handle, I'm not talking about the table, how you eat etiquette. I'm talking about etiquette, how to really take people from money. It's all fun. You're gonna enjoy it, and it's all right thing to do. To, with other people in the world doing it. You ask any child, do they want to make an extra five hundred to a thousand dollars a month? Now, any child, that, would you like to make an extra five hundred dollars a month? Sure. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be right there. Come on. Come on. Tell them about it then whenever they go on a lunch break. You can just take them out to your car. And we can okay. keep them outside of the building. They can't say anything. But you don't know. Okay. <laughs> There's two categories underneath uh, selling and, and, and distribution, right? Now, uh, when you're dealing with recruiting, that's an art. 
Recruiting is an art. Right? Right? Re recruiting is an art. Look at art form, right? But selling is techniques. Right? Different people got different techniques of selling, right? Right? Some like to, to rush it. Some people like to do a saw. Some people like to give you a little something to get you to buy something else. I mean, there's different selling techniques, right? But how many people you know that a, a, a recruiting artist? I mean, they do this for a living. And you have to be a master of, of, of recruiting. How many people know the art form of, uh, of, of, of recruiting? I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, there's other people out there that's master recruiters. But, but to be an international recruiter is what you want. Like that guy. International recruiting. Right? International recruiting. You want to be able, see, when you get a distribution, that, it shows you how to deal with anybody on an international level. Because let's say you meet somebody that's African. They never, you never did business with an African before, right? I mean, but because of your presentation, they got friends and family and people, they want to make money too. Don't they? Yeah, but, but if you're talking the right talk, which is branding, you walk in, you're all branded up, you got some marketing going on, right? They see who you are, right? And they say, I'm going to do business with you. <laughs> They say, you have any friends and family would love to have that make the whole house smell good? Yes. Because I swear, I sell to every nationality that comes my way. If, you, if you're Korean, you're buying. If you're Italian, you're buying. German, it doesn't matter. Russian, you're going to buy my product. <laughs> and you want to think international. You want to have a local presence, right? We're international presence as well. Write it down. Write that. Write, write it. Say it again. If you want to have a, 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 a local presence, International influence, right? Right. So you got to be able to walk in front of Italian and say, "I got what you want," and I'm going to speak your language. It's going to say, "Number one, branding, marketing." When you start talking about that, distribution, right? Master distributor, they they air perk up because yeah, they know the language. They know the international language, man. So you do it while these kids are young. You ain't gonna have a problem with your babies. They gonna grow up knowing how to deal with international people of influence, right? They're not. They're used to it. See, you know our kids. This is just the beginning. They're gonna be introduced to so many different things. So I'm those four kids that I teach every day. I'm taking them out to the uh, in, uh, all the warehouses. Not all of them, the major ones that I sell to, so they can see my product on their shelves, right? Take them to a lot of little stores around here and show them, so they can put one and two together. They say, why? I see the vans, I see the signs, I see the, uh, the product, but I don't see the distribution. So I'll take them right out there and say, here, let me show you. Let me introduce you to some of these, these Koreans and the Arabs and these Jews that I know, right? So that so you can shake their hand and meet them and say, hi, how you doing? You know, and one day they're going to be selling to you. So just, you know, because it ain't going to just be my product. 
when you under, when somebody understands the, the system, right? You put any product through it. You might you may not fall in love with oil, but you sell a lot of it. But the thing that you always wanted to, to create, you, now you have the money to do it. It can't nobody stop you. That's an awesome feeling. The startup, I got six companies plus, and some of them I don't talk about. Yeah, I can put anything to the system. Once you got that, what? You know what you gonna do with it? To have that type of uh, feeling, to have a local presence and an international influence is huge. For a child to be able to go anywhere they want and know that they can make a difference right away with other children. And they're gonna be youth advocates for the rest of their lives. Just like me, I ain't changed. Man, I've been chasing these kids for years. For years I've been chasing kids. And now I got it. Now I got it. Now I got it. And I'm doing it. Right? Right? So, at a young age, you see I learned this stuff when I was young. I was always an advocate for the young. The young. When I was I was recruiting kids when I was eleven. You want to sell some of my candy? 